Hi and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday, my name is Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's series Diablero. How my reviews work. I give a short synopsis, then I talk about what I liked and then what I didn't like, and then at the end I give a fun tidbit or fact before giving my rating. So Diablo is set in Mexico and it's kind of like if you took Supernatural, Constantine and Ghostbusters and smooshed them together and then added a little bit of Exorcist for good measure and that is the kind of series that you will get from this. Kind of. It's about the eternal fight of good and evil and is set in the colourful streets of Mexico. Angels are fed up with how bad humans have been and so they leave us to protect ourselves. Which is where the Diableros come in. It's a fantasy, horror, supernatural, thriller. That's a lot of genres. <laughs> Uh, the story follows a father, Romero Ventra, a priest who needs the help of a legendary demon hunter, the Diablero, or otherwise known as Elvis Infante in this case. There is also a character named Nancy, a sort of modern day superhero. She can control demons and sometimes at great cost to herself. These three live in a constant battle between two worlds and while they're doing that they trap and sell demons, fallen angels and otherworldly creatures in a black market linked to an underground fighting circuit. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Okay, so what I like... Jeblero doesn't waste time in getting into the main story arc. In fact, the opening episode reminded me a lot of the Constantine film with Keanu Reeves and the first season of Supernatural. The first episode sets the mood well and from there on we are introduced to this kind of very eclectic band of people. Elvis Infante personifies his Di Diablero character well, I thought, although not a lot is told to us about his character at first in story. The arc instead reveals his backstory slyly through tidbits of information told to us through the story progression. The same could be said about Nancy's character, although it does feel like Nancy's backstory is the darkest of the group. When you see what has happened to her, you can't help but be invested in her character. Obviously, none of the backstories would mean a damn thing if the acting wasn't up to scratch, and I have to say I thought the performances in general were quite good. It didn't take me long to be invested with their characters. I think it was about episode 4 where I really felt the group start to complement each other. At some points I did think that Diablero was taking itself too seriously, consistently, um, I was looking for those moments, those lighter comedy moments to kind of let up the darkened mood. Some of the um, series similar to this, like Supernatural, can often bring in scripting and dialogue, those comedy moments or lighter moments so that when you get to the darker tones and the darker stuff, and there is a lot in this series of that, it kind of gives you a moment to breathe and you kind of get to like the characters more. You can't just consistently go through bad times. Um, well, you can but it does help to kind of alleviate the darkness. But I do think by th episode 3 and 4 that they did find their groove and the comedy did come in some of the lines and action sequences that you get to see. And I was kind of relieved, I thought, oh great, they're finding their groove, now it's kind of really going to hit its stride. And I did feel like it did. I was hooked. Each episode is about 40 minutes long and there's only 8 episodes in the entire series, so if you do get hooked yourself, it won't take you long to get through the series. It didn't for me. Something I wasn't quite expecting was the level of expertise in the cinematography and lighting. And I know sometimes I go on about cinematography and lighting, this is kind of what I really love. If the series looks great, then I can easily be drawn into the story that they are trying to tell. If the expertise of the lens is done well, then I'm there, I'm there with them. And so that's why sometimes I tend to go on about cinematography and lighting. And I really do feel that the standard in TV series has risen a lot recently. I thought Netflix's original uh, Turkish uh, series, The Protector, the cinematography was excellent in that. And again, Diablero is fantastic. The color palette works really well with the culture and tone of the series in each episode. And I don't think it ever faltered. I thought that the cinematography was consistently really good. Now, what I did not like. For the most part, I felt like the main protagonist all had a reason to be on the team. They had backstories within the main arc and it worked well. However, I could not help but feel that the priest story took way too long to get into. It wasn't until the last couple of episodes that I even see the need for his character to be in the show. Now I know his character is written into the show and there's a purpose for him in the main arc, but Elvis Infante's character is a demon hunter and trapper and Nancy is a superpowered demon person. The priest, he is just kind of there because he has been written in. 
but his character doesn't really bring much to the table. I really thought that the priest's powers, like you see in some of these series similar to this, would come into play quickly, but it doesn't. Which left me feeling, what was the point of his character? I mean, he is one of the main team, of the one of the main ensemble, and I think he acts well. It just, I just wanted more from his character. I wanted them to do more with it. They do do stuff with his character later on. I really wanted him to feel like he wasn't just an add-on, and at times I felt like he was. For the most part, I thought the VFX is used well, especially when demons are on screen. You don't get to see them very long, um, or they are shown through reflections, and I thought this worked quite well. But when there are moments where some of the demons are on camera for extended periods, they didn't look that great. And at those times when they are on camera for extended times, it kind of took me out of the story a bit because you notice that it's VFX. Now it's time for Did You Know? Did you know uh, Fernando uh, Velasquez, the composer of this series, also composed on films like A Monster Calls, Crimson Peak, and The Orphanage? And I think Diablero, in part, owes some of its atmosphere to his skill. At times the score definitely helps carry you into the next scene. I was actually surprised by how much I really enjoyed this series. About halfway in, I felt like I'd been watching these characters for many series already. I totally see Diablero having a very long lifespan and I think it deserves it. Although this type of story has been told before, it has some very fresh aspects to it. It's a genre that is a little bit long in the tooth. The elements that it has in it are, I thought was quite refreshing from the underground demon fighting rings to using demons as some sort of currency to a very different main arc story. The characters are interesting for the most part. Nancy is my favorite character by far. And it's for this reason, I'm going to give Diablo Row a B+. Thanks for watching my review of Diablo Row. If you like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell. I hope you have an amazing Christmas and New Year. Thank you so much for supporting the Ruby Tuesday. And most of all, remember, live long and Tuesday.